If you use a Fujifilm X-T3 in 2022 and love it, well, today's Fast Friday is for you. Hi everyone, welcome to Pal the Tech. The Fujifilm X-T3 camera was released in September of 2018. That's now over four years ago. Now, since then, Fujifilm has released the much hyped and much loved, I might add, X-T4 camera with onboard IBIS. And it seems like everyone lately is talking about the recent X-H2S camera with its brand new X-Trans processor, better video, and improved autofocus. So, where does the X-T3 fit in today in 2022. Is it still relevant? I'll tell you where it fits in. <laughs> Right here in my camera bag. That's where this is an awesome camera and it's stayed incredible Since the very day I bought it four years ago. Okay, here are ten reasons why I love using my X-T3 Every single day number one on the list are the sheer amount of shooting options that you get with the X-T3 Just look at the X-T3's menu. It is absolutely jam-packed with shooting options image quality settings and ways that you can better get your shot shot. Whether you are the sort of photographer that prefers to shoot JPEG, I mean, look at all of these JPEG only options and film simulations. Or if you shoot RAW, being able to control the autofocus priority in which you can adapt the camera to your specific shooting situation. You can dig down into all of the manual focus tools, automatic ISO, sports shooting options, shutter options, drive options, and interval timers. You name it, Pretty much this camera's got it. But to get the most out of this camera, you really need to dig down into all of the settings and all of the options that it has. Number two, this is an amazing video camera. Like still shooting, this camera excels at giving you a single tool to capture incredible video footage. With different compression and codec options, frame rates of up to 60 frames per second, and all kinds of visual adjustments that you can make to any kind of film simulation you decide to shoot with. Or just throw the camera into F-Log and get the flexibility to edit later on, or mix and match depending upon if you're using an SD card or HD. HDMI. I could go on and on, but I think you get the idea. This little portable studio has you covered for most shooting situations that you would run into. But like I mentioned before, you need to take the time to read the manual, right? <laughs> or watch a few pal to tech videos to be sure that you're getting the most out of this powerhouse of a camera. Number three, the flip out screen, okay? <laughs> As an owner of an X-T4, which decided to go with a different style of flip-out screen, I feel I am qualified to talk about this subject. I like the flip-out screen better on the X-T4. However, 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 that doesn't mean I feel that way all the time. There are times when I prefer the flip out screen on the X-T3. It is a great way of doing it because suppose you're doing street photography and you want to hold the camera kind of down like this and you want to look straight down, right? Exactly straight right over your sensor. You can do that with the screen flipped up like this. It is also better for holding up high and tilting the screen down and being able to look directly into the center of the scene that you're capturing. It is much better than having the flip out screen going off to the side like it does on the X-T4. And number four, real doors on the side of the camera, okay? Let me explain. On both sides of the camera on the X-T3, you have hard doors that flip out, okay? They're made out of plastic, they're nice and solid, and they work great, and they protect the ports that they cover. And what is really great about the X-T3 door Doors is that you can take them off. For example, I took mine off right here and I haven't looked back since. I always keep it off because I am constantly plugging in HDMI cables, USB cables, microphones, headphones, and so forth. It makes it so much easier. It's also easier when you attach a camera cage to the camera not to have those doors in the way. So you can just take them off and you can put them back on when you're done using them. I just keep mine off all the time. Okay, number five, we're half done here. A dedicated metering dial. Have a look at this. I love being able to quickly dial in my metering without having to go into the menu and do it from there. I far prefer having a dedicated dial for that. The X-T4 doesn't have that. The X-T3 does. Case closed. And speaking of stuff the X-T4 doesn't have, let's not 
Let's not forget about the headphone jack. The X-T3 includes a headphone jack right in the camera. And because it has one already in the camera, you don't have to have the hassle to lug around a battery grip, which has a headphone jack in it, stick it on the camera just to be able to plug in a set of headphones into the camera. To be fair, you could also use the little dongle that they gave you, right? Which I can't demo for this video because I lost mine. That's my point. Who the hell wants to have the hassle of having to lug around either a battery grip or yet another idiotic dongle adapter thing just to plug in a set of headphones to monitor your audio for your video. The X-T3, ready to go in a second's notice. Plug in a set of headphones, no problem, with no silly dongles needed. Points to the X-T3. Number seven, speaking of ports, I actually prefer the placement and the fact that the X-T3 has more room between the ports in general than say the X-T4 does. There's a bit more room between the HDMI and the USB-C port and I actually find that easier to work with when I have both cables plugged in at the same time and I'm having to take one out say and switch them in and that sort of thing. Okay, now let's talk the ISO dial. The X-T3 has both an L and an H setting. I've made videos on this before. Search my channel for L and H ISO to learn about what those are. Now, I love having them there because I can preset those values and then quickly grab them when I'm shooting by turning the dial and not having to go into the command dial and twirl, twirl, twirl until I get there. So for example, you can go right into button dial setting and say to the camera, you know what? When it's in H, I want it to always go to 25, 600, boom. And you can change the L as well. And that way, if I'm out in a about shooting in a really low light situation and I'm cranked all the way up to 12,800 and I quickly need to get a higher ISO than that, all I have to do is turn the dial, boom, like that and it will immediately jump to that saved value. The X-T4 took those away and instead you kind of have to mess around with the command dial, which is really easy when you're quickly turning it and you're in a rush to accidentally go past the setting you want and then have to go back. It's faster to just go dink like that on the physical control dial. Again, these are personal preferences I have. Speaking of which, let's talk about the placement of the function button. On the X-T3, it's located right here. And on the X-T4, it's located right here. I actually prefer the location of it on the X-T3. If I'm holding the camera in my right hand like this and I happen to have a heavy lens on it and I need to quickly access this button, I find it easy to hold it like this and take my thumb and go boom, boom, boom. That's easier than if the button is here, okay? Because then I have to jump over the exposure compensation dial and it's a little bit more like, mm, like, like that. Again, this is personal preference. And lastly, the X-T3 has a pretty awesome burst rate for action shots, and I don't think people talk about it enough. So if you go into drive setting, have a look at this. If you put your camera into electronic shutter, you can get 20 frames per second. That's a pretty darn good burst rate. And even with mechanical shutter, you get 11 frames per second. And if you're willing to deal with a 1.5 times crop, you can go all the way up to 30 frames per second with a 1.5 crop and the electronic shutter. If you need that high of a burst rate, you can get it on this camera. So you know something? My X-T3 camera is the most banged up, dented, scratched, and used piece of gear that I have in this studio. I paid about $1,800 for this camera and it has been worth every single penny and then some. One of the best buying decisions I think I've ever made. And the fact that you can get an X-T3 camera brand new today for about $1,000 is an even better deal. Every single video I've ever shot on this channel, including the one that you are watching right now, was shot on an X-T3. It just works. Case closed. You know, it's sometimes easy to underappreciate and sort of forget about older gear, especially when people are, you know, talking about the latest X-H2S or whatever latest Sony or Canon or whatever cameras are out. But make no mistake about it. If you are wanting a camera that can really do it all with an amazing set of features for both still and video shooting, not to mention the ergonomics, the compact size, the incredible lens selection, this camera represents 
everything I love about Fujifilm, digital photography, and filmmaking gear as a whole. And that is why I love the Fujifilm X-T3. Well, it's time to do another outro. I hope you found this video helpful and perhaps even entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will be signing off now, but have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you in a brand new video next week. Take care.